Okay, hello friends, hi, my name is Doc Mo and welcome to my YouTube channel. So I'm new to YouTube and I'm new to making videos, so just bear with me as I'm trying to find my feet. Hey, <laughs> great. <laughs> hi, boy. Bear with me too whilst I make the video. Okay, hello friends, hi, my name is Doc Mo and thank you for viewing my YouTube channel. Now this is the first time that I make videos, this is the first time that I do anything on YouTube, um, so just bear with me as I try and find my feet and try to figure out what works and what doesn't. So just a bit about me, um, so I am an Academic Foundation Programme Doctor based at St Mary's Hospital in Paddington, so we do the first year a little bit outside of London and the second year at St Mary's and the uh, subject is Academic Surgery, which is something I'm quite excited about. Um, I graduated from Imperial College, so I know the hospitals in Northwest London quite well, and I learned and loved the hospital, so that's why I've decided to stick around. So I applied for London, and I also applied for Northwest England, and I got my top choice um, in London, which is obviously the job that I'm currently doing. Okay, so what's the point of these videos? So when I was applying for the AFP last year, I found that there was a lot of hearsay and rumors, but not many hard facts. Often I had to go to people who were in the year above me for hard facts, but I also felt quite bad bothering people who were just finding their feet as an F1. I know there were quite a few courses that were run around about August and September time, and I went to a couple of these and I found them actually very useful. I'd recommend you do the same as well, but I couldn't go to all of them for logistical reasons. There wasn't actually that much online either. So I remember when I was applying to med school um, seven years ago now, you go into the student room and everyone would be gossiping and then talking and chatting. But when it came to applying to the AFP, I didn't find that there was that much information available online. So I had to end up collating loads of information from lots of different sources and almost getting a curriculum together of my own as I was preparing for the AFP application process and the interviews. And also a lot of people in young years have been asking me for advice and I've given a couple of talks. So I decided why not just record all of the important information, all of the information I've got, um, put it together maybe in a series and put it on YouTube. And that way people um, can access it across the country for free. Okay, so the format of these videos, so we've made a number of episodes, the format of them is that they're very bite-sized and they're very direct. I will not be including advanced things just for the sake of sounding clever. Um, the stuff that I've included is genuinely the stuff that I covered and the stuff that I needed um, to get me my place. And I've just included all of the information. I've not held anything back um, in these videos. So the other thing is that these videos are designed to be standalone. So I'm not going to be signposting you around um, a great deal other than maybe in two exceptions. And you'll see that in the clinical interviews uh, video where I signpost you to the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine emergency section um, and then the stats section where I signpost you to how to read a paper by Trisha Greenall. Other than that the idea is that after viewing these videos you will be able to confidently talk through the clinical scenarios station um, of interviews up and down the country and you can confidently pull apart an abstract so that's the idea of these videos. Okay, so now let's talk about what the AFP is and um, why you should think about applying. Uh, just a quick thing, obviously I am two months into my job. So uh, later on in the year, I'm going to be doing another video and I'll probably interview some people a couple of years ahead to get their opinions as well. But theoretically, uh, the following points stand. So at the end of med school, if you're going to continue working in the UK, you've got a choice between really two options. You can either go down the foundation program route, which is where you do two years, consisting of uh, six four-month blocks, and these are in medicine, surgery, GP, psychiatry. You can either do that, or you can do the academic foundation program, which is the same six slots, but for one of the slots, you do a research block, and that research can either be in uh, medicine or surgery, or it could be in education, or it could even be in management. Um, and there's a huge variety of things that you can be doing, and it's continuing to grow. Some places are very specific, so some of the programs will tell you exactly who your supervisor is and what the project is before you even apply. And then other places are far more flexible. Um, and in order to get a good idea of uh, what it's actually like, I'd probably recommend that you contact the current F1 or the F2 who's doing that job and then get an idea of how flexible that program is. Okay, so what are the key reasons then for doing the AFP? The first thing is you don't really have a lot to lose by applying. All it requires is a little bit of time and we'll go through the application process in this video and then in my next video, the white space questions, we'll go through how to answer some of the white space questions um, quite in a quite straightforward way. So this application is done alongside your foundation program application. So you can do both at the same time. And if you don't get an offer from the academic foundation program route, you're still in the foundation program route uh, and it's completely unaffected by your other application. So you get two academic foundation applications. So you can only apply to two 
regions in the country. That's just something to bear in mind as well. Okay, so the second reason for applying is that it will help you prepare for finals. Um, all of the AFP jobs that I'm aware of um, require uh, interviews, and these interviews will generally speaking rely on some knowledge that you've gained during your medical degree. They count as finals revision in my opinion, so it puts you in a good place uh, when you're preparing for finals uh, by preparing for these interviews. Okay, so the next thing is that in the job itself you get some protected research time and I think that's quite valuable. Increasingly later on in the career it seems that people uh, want to see evidence of research, they want to see evidence of management or teaching and the AFP allows you to have protected time to fulfill these requirements. So I think it's good, it can help enhance your CV uh, long term as long as you're willing to put in some effort during the AFP itself. You've also got access to some very helpful resources when you're doing AFP. So as far as I'm aware, all of the AFPs will gain you access to a huge journal collection, uh, much like you did at university, and will also give you access to the hospital libraries. And those are really helpful resources if you want to do research. The next thing is you get to meet some amazing people. So um, these are your fellow um, academic F1s and F2s. Um, as well as um, researchers who you'll be working with, as well as some known names and quite senior people um, working in your local hospitals. So it can be really interesting to get to know these people. The next thing is that it gives you a chance to go above and beyond. So as part of the foundation program, you have to fulfill some core requirements in order to progress to the next step of training. And the academic foundation program allows you the chance to do even more stuff if that's what you're interested in. So I think that that's quite a big positive for the AFP as well. Okay, so we need to be super fair then and then discuss the negatives or at least um, why maybe you wouldn't think about doing the AFP. I think the biggest thing is that you get less clinical time. So um, rather than having, like we said, those six blocks of clinical time, you've actually only got five. Now, during that final one, you'll be doing some research. Some AFP programs allow you the opportunity to be a part of the on-call rotor. So you keep those clinical skills ticking away as part of the horrible night shifts as an F2. But other jobs don't, and you will be out of clinical practice for four months. That's quite a long period of time. And in theory, you can get quite de-skilled if you're away from the wards for that long. You also need to meet the same DOPS requirements as people who are doing the foundation program. So that's a little bit increased stress really because you've got to do all of the same uh, sign-offs in uh, less time. There's also an element of additional pressure with what you do with those four months. So I'm told by people who are slightly more senior than me that uh, if at the end of the two years you've not really done much with that four month research block, people will ask you why. Um, what was the reason that you didn't churn out research during that block? What was the reason that you didn't do posters? You didn't do any teaching, you didn't present. And people will ask you, if you had that time off, why didn't you do something with it? And that's literally it in terms of limitations. Um, there's a ton of pros and not that many negatives. So in summary, I just reckon you just go for it. It doesn't take long to put together a good application and the interviews are a good experience for life as well as for your final year exams as well. So just, I would 100% recommend going for it. All right, we're getting to the end of the first video, but we'll just talk about how you actually apply. So you apply through Oriel, which is the same portal that you use to apply for the foundation program. You can apply, like we said, to up to two academic foundation programs as well as the foundation program. You start off with on the form filling some generic details about yourself, which should be populated from your Oriel account anyway. And then you submit um, information such as additional degrees that you may have done, as well as PhDs and stuff. Then you get onto the real juice of the application, which is your publications. And it is a myth that you require publications to go for AFP. It does give you points for most of the deaneries, but it is by no means an absolute requirement. You do need to demonstrate that you've done some sort of research before, whether that be an audit, whether that be just presenting locally, um, but you don't need to have gone and got published in Nature and have 100 publications in order to get an AFP. That is absolutely not true. So after you've listed your publications, um, you can start to list your presentations. And what they'll usually ask for is for the country that you presented it in, the organizing committee of the conference, the name of the conference, the authors, and the titles. Now, they will go and verify uh, that this research was legit. I've got no idea how they do it, um, but they do. And just make sure that you're not lying on that form because they will find out and that's not a good thing. And it's not ethical as well. And then there'll be a section for you to enter uh, information about prizes. So these can be national prizes as well as prizes awarded by your university. Um, and then that's basically it for the application form unless you're doing white space questions. Now, if you're going to be doing white space questions, I've got a whole video on that and you can click here to um, go and check that out. Okay, now every deanery will use this information in different ways and they'll score your uh, application in different ways. What I would recommend is that you go and find the deanery handbook for the AFP and um, usually it's outlined quite clearly. 
For London, for example, they tell you how many points each publication is worth, how many points each presentation is worth. For other deaneries, it might be less specific, but they still give you a general idea of, uh, of what the weighting of each section is. If you're not sure whether a presentation counts, usually it's got to be national and above, so national and international, but if you're not sure if it counts and you still have space and um, you haven't maxed out the presentation section, just put it down and if it doesn't get accepted, then that's fine. Um, but if it does get accepted, then, then that's brilliant. Okay, and then finally, you've got to rank all of the jobs. Um, and there are a couple of things to think about when you're ranking jobs. The first thing is that what's the AFP actually in? Because that's what the research block is going to be in in the, in, in the second year. Um, and then the, the second thing that you want to be thinking about is what, what are the actual jobs that you do? So um, they are usually advertised uh, well in advance, usually by August of the application year. And that's just something to bear in mind when you're applying as well. So when you're ranking the jobs, there are usually two kinds of people. There are those that will rank all of the AFP jobs within that deanery. And then there are those that will only rank the ones that they would uh, accept. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you do. I think um, generally speaking, there's a higher chance of you getting an AFP if you rank all of the jobs. But be realistic with yourself. Would you be willing to accept all of the AFP jobs? Maybe it's in a branch of medicine or surgery that you're just absolutely not interested in. Um, and maybe that kind of AFP wouldn't be for you. It's up to you to decide and there's no right or wrong answer really, it's just personal preference. Okay, so that's basically it. We've got a bunch of other videos as part of the series, so we'll be covering the white space questions. There's a link to the video over there and then we'll also be talking about the clinical interview, the research interview and then a separate episode for statistics and then finally we'll also cover the personal interview as well, um, which does come up in some of the deaneries. Thank you very much, welcome to my channel. Um, if you've got any comments, feel free to pop them below. Subscribe if you find this content useful, and until next time.